Hello once again folks and you're very welcome to another video from God Dog and Fly. Tom Boyak as Verkholuider. And today um, I've got a, quite a lot to get through today now. Um, some very interesting questions which I'm going to attempt to answer and when I'm finished doing that I'm going to tie a very simple little fly. So first of all um, I can't remember who asked the question but uh, feather care. How do I take care of my feathers? And uh, I'm going to show you an example of some of the feathers that I use here. Um, these are feathers that I just happened to come across. This is a heron's feather. Very useful feathers that happens to hurl and a uh, heron's feather is very useful for tying particular flies. So I found this on the bank of the river. Anytime I come across feathers like this, I'll always bring them home. This is another feather I found while stout the fields with the dogs. It's a buzzard's feather. Again, a nice feather for tying the bodies on some flies. So the first thing I do whenever I find feathers like these is I put them in a plastic bag and then I put them in the freezer for about a week. This will kill any possible uh, vermin that might be in the feathers that might possibly infest all my other feathers. Now, I also pick up road kills. Uh, it's quite common to see birds killed, many millions are killed apparently every year here in Ireland by traffic. So I'll always pick up any birds I see and I'll take off any plumage, particularly the wings, and I bring them home and again into a plastic bag and into the freezer. Um, when uh, I take them back out of the freezer then I store them with all my other feathers and I'm going to show you where I um, keep all my feathers right now and how I look after them. Now <laughs> this is a box that I um, requisitioned from my son when he he's no longer living at home so um, like I have this box here which he left after him and uh, for those of you who are familiar with them won't be no bother but uh, it's something to do with a video game or something it's called Call of Duty Black Ops so uh, I think maybe there was some video game or some machine in here for playing videos and um, what I really like about this box is it's it seals itself all around when you close it down it's got two catches here at the front that close down and they kind of it, it's a, a seal where nothing can get in essentially now in here is where I keep all well virtually all my feathers and um, anyone who ties dry flies for example would be familiar with stuff like this this is a saddle of um, feathers um, I'll show you a few more here there's another saddle yet another saddle and anyone who has bought these will know that they're not cheap and um, they need to be looked after because there are dangers about in the, in the guise of moths M-O-T-H-S some people might be familiar with my pronunciation moths the moths get in they, they're not the real problem. The moths get in, they lay their eggs. It's the resultant larvae that are the problem. They will eat your all your feathers. And uh, what has happened to me one time, um, I had been tying flies for quite some time, and I came out to my store of feathers, opened the box, and it was just dust. They had eaten virtually everything down to dust. So. I had run out of these boys, these essentials, these are mothballs and uh, I had run out of them and went down to the local shop where I bought them before in the drapers and they told me that they were no longer available, that they couldn't get them so I kind of forgot about it and neglected them and I paid the price I had around 1500 euro worth of feathers chewed down to dust uh, so Apparently now mothballs are unavailable in shops here in Ireland 
because apparently the, the chemical, the active ingredient, naphthalene, which kills the, the vermin, is a controlled chemical now. It's no longer available for sale. So I probably did, did um, made an illegal importation. I bought these on the internet. But like, I need mothballs. I've tried other stuff. The people say that cedar and all that kind of stuff, and none of them ever really works. This is the only thing that works. Naphthalene will stop moths coming in, into your feathers. So besides that bag of mothballs, I have loose ones in the box here, and I have them in separate bags, like these are pheasant tails, for instance, and I have a, a mothball in each separate bag, um, and that keeps them safe. Now, uh, in here I have some of the one of the road casualties this was a, a water hen that was killed crossing from it was a pond on either side of the road and it tried to cross between the two and obviously got hit with a car I have its wings again a very nice for tying wet flies I have one second these are snipe wings quite a lot of these I have another bag of them as well uh, snipe wings are great for tying wet flies lovely soft hackles and as a hunter I am um, I harvest quite a few snipe every year and these are their wings excellent stuff and um, what else do I have here woodcock's wing again uh, harvested from hunting great uh, for tying wet flies and also you can make feather wings from these feathers as well and what else uh, yeah these are just uh, what I call the Indian capes, uh, generally they're for sale relatively cheap and I buy these because although they mightn't be great for tying flies, uh, complete flies, they're grand for making tails etc. But they're very cheap to buy. So that's how I keep all my feathers. I'm trying to see if there's anything else in here now that, might, that you might be interested in seeing. Not a whole lot really. Mainly, mainly good quality dry fly capes. There, it's essential that you that they're kept away from the moths in particular. Uh, these are nice wet fly. I showed these in another video earlier on. Excellent for tying wet flies. So that's feather care. Um, Next, uh, I'm going to attempt to answer um, a couple of other questions. Right, I have a series of questions here from uh, Sean McGowan. He asked me, I think, a three, three questions in one, essentially. Uh, he said, uh, great videos, George. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> Just wondering, what's your opinion on wings for dry flies? Also, when should I use traditional dry flies versus parachutes? Also, with CDC flies, they tend to sink after a few casts. Do you recommend adding foam? So, the first one is just wondering, what's your opinion on wings for dry flies? Now, wings for dry flies. Okay, um, if you go back many years ago when I started fly tying, there was a very limited amount of materials available to make wings for dry flies. Essentially, it was the old traditional slips of feathers from starling wings, etc. That feather wings was essentially all there was to make wings of flies. And they worked, there's no question about that, but it required a very high level of skill in order to be able to marry wings together and then to be able to tie them in properly. So if you take, for example, um, an old fly like a Greenwell's Glory, that required you to tie in a matching pair of wing slips from a starling wing in order to comply with the, we'll call it the design of the fly. That's how it was originally intended. Now, they worked fine, but fly tying has evolved and times have moved on and there are much better materials available. I, I, I occasionally get orders from people for flies tied with the traditional materials but very rarely. I now use 
mainly artificial materials for making the wings on flies. For the most part I still use some natural materials but mainly Antron and similar materials. There's all sorts of winging materials available now for winging flies that weren't available when I started tying flies. I mean there's a multitude of different materials. So what I would say is they're much more durable and they're, they're equally as effective in terms of the flies are just there's no difference essentially. What I tend to use a lot for tying the wings on flies, particularly on, on dry flies anyway, is deer hair. And deer hair I find as a great material, very durable and makes for a super effective fly. So um, I hope that sort of answers that part of the question. This next part was when should I use traditional dry flies versus parachutes? Now traditional dry flies of course implies that as I've described the older type flies, the, the flies that were tied using the feather wings and a full hackle, they still work, no question about it, they've worked for many many years but there, there are better alternatives. I would choose a parachute fly over a traditional fly every time because when you think about it if you take the larger fish in a river they will know that an emerging fly is a far more vulnerable than a hatched fly. A hatched adult fly can, uh, can take to the wing any second. So the older wiser fish, generally the larger fish, will know that a fly in the process of emerging or hatching out is far more vulnerable and easier to take. So they will key in on those and that's essentially what a parachute fly is representing. So a parachute fly will work, nine times out of ten will work better than a traditional winged hackled fly. It's rare actually to see those old flies, anybody using them anymore. They're still for sale in places but I, I haven't tied traditional flies like that for quite a long time except that somebody orders them specifically. That's the second part. The third part of the question is CDC flies, they tend to sink after a few casts. Do you recommend adding foam? Now you can add foam if you want to to any fly and that'll give it a, a certain level of buoyancy. But CDC flies are problematic from that point of view. They're, they very easily become waterlogged. There's two solutions that I use. Um, just basically some tissue paper, uh, um, kitchen paper basically and just squeeze the fly between a lump of that and that will dry it out for the most part. Um, I recommend anybody who's fishing dry flies to have this stuff. It's, it, this is a new one. This is an amadou patch. Amadou is a naturally occurring um, fungus and it's super absorbent. So there's a piece of that in here and I hang this out of my vest and it's absolutely brilliant for drying out any fly including CDC flies but there's be careful with it because although it's super absorbent if it gets waterlogged particularly if there's heavy rain for instance and it gets waterlogged it's useless thereafter because what happens is it dries out and becomes brittle and it's uh, it completely lost its absorbency and it's of no use anymore um, I've made the mistake a couple of times, hence this new one, that I've had it hanging on my vest and I've been wading deeply and I was so engrossed in whatever fish I was after that I forgot about it and it became uh, waterlogged under the water and then again, like I say, absolutely useless. So the best thing to do with um, an amadou patch is to keep it inside and then use it whenever dry or fly out and then put it back in. Don't forget, don't leave it hanging like I did on more than one occasion and then it's uh, because they're not, they're not cheap. So that's the three parts of that question. I hope uh, I've answered it to your satisfaction. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie a very simple fly, but a very effective little fly. Now there's a fly that hatches on my local river shore here and its tributaries and in many many uh, rivers around this country and others, um, the Iron Blue. Um, a brilliant little fly, the Iron Blue done is the adult uh, um, version of the fly and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tie the nymphal form of it because there are times, and I've seen it, 
where the trout will key in on the nymph as it's rising to the surface. They're ignoring the hatched fly and even the emerging fly and they're keyed in on the nymph that's rising to the surface. And I was stumped for a long, long time in trying to uh, figure out a good um, nymph that would work on those trout and this is what I came up with. Now, bear in mind that I'm tying this fly on a size 12 hook. I'm doing that from the, for for ease of you being able to see what I'm doing and it's easier for the video camera to pick up on a, on a hook this size. So I'm tying on a size 12. It's imperative that you tie this fly on a size 20. The nymph of the iron blue is a very, very tiny fly. And this is out of all proportion. So bear in mind that a size 20 is the size you want. So everything will have to be proportionate. This bead, of course, is too big. The hook is too big. Everything is too big. What you need to do is uh, have it all in proportion. So you'll be using a much smaller bead, a size 20 hook, and I'll now demonstrate the rest. I'm using black uh, tying thread. This happens to be Semperfly uh, black waxed thread. So now it's going to start off behind the bead and I tie this fly short. I'm only going to down about half ways down the shank of the hook. And I'm using the heron harl that I showed you earlier. And I'm going to cut out a little piece of that heron harl. Just like that. Bring the thread over, catch it into place. That's it. Now, and around it goes. Now, it doesn't get um, much simpler than that. So all it is is a purple bead and the gray heron hurl. And the combination of the two together in a size 20 has been the solution to a problem that I've been trying to overcome for many, many years. So again, I'm gonna reiterate Tie it in a size 20. So that's it folks. Um, flies like this don't come much simpler. Anybody who has been tying flies for any period of time will easily be able to manage it. Um, just make sure to tie it in a size 20. I can't overemphasize the importance of that. So um, I hope the, this video has been um, enjoyable for you and that you have maybe gained some something from it and um, if you have any more questions or suggestions jump into the comment section and leave them there I'll do my very best to answer them as best I can and um, be sure to um, like the video and if you're not already a subscriber to consider subscribing and if you really want to support the channel I'm leaving a link in the video description to my patreon page where any little bit of support would be much appreciated so shina will oomse enuv em gadi gachasver erakele erishmoit bigi slain agus bigi egiskrakt slain gafoel